I just want to go on record here that I am the only one right in this room. <laughs> every, other, every other belief system in this room is wrong. I said to the imam, I said, you know the Quran teaches that Allah is the only God. And you know the Quran teaches that anyone that believes in a triune God is cursed. Your book says that, so be honest. But here is the basis of our unity, that, that by the theology of creation, there is the fatherhood of God that makes all of us his children by the theology of creation. But then there's a theology of redemption, that we all become born again sons and daughters of God through the shed blood of Jesus, which is by hearing the gospel and coming in. So our unity is... Which is what Bishop Carlton is saying. He's saying, that, he's saying the same thing that you just said, that we all are sons of God because of what the, the work that Christ did. By the theology of creation, mm -hmm. we are all sons of God. Mm -hmm. By the theology of redemption mm -hmm. means that you have to have heard the gospel mm -hmm. and responded to it. What about... That's where the theology okay. of creation... Okay, uh, let me ask you this. Down. What I always wonder, what about the little man in Tibet, as you said, that tends his garden maybe, what, 2,000 years ago, where there was no TVs, there was no broadcasting, there was no radio, there was nothing. Right. And he lived a great life, and he was a nice person, and he had one wife, and he did what he was supposed to do, and, and he never heard of Christ. Sure. What happens to him? What happens to him? Well, <clears throat> does he burn a, there, in hell? Well, there's a phrase. There's, well, first of all, the scripture says in Romans that all men know that there is a God. That's, that's the gift of God to mankind is that built into his DNA is the knowledge that there is a God. Even through general revelation, Paul says, when you look at this universe, you know there's deity somewhere. You know that. There, and, and what is, I agree with Carlton, is that universally, God has put a morality into his creation, that there is a built-in conscience to know right from wrong. Now, I agree that all truth is from God. So in other religions, we call it objective propositional revelation, which means all religions have a measure of truth that matches the gospel. Hmm. And in another religion, if you embrace that truth, indirectly you're embracing Christ, whether you know it or not, because all truth is Christ. This is the truth of the light that enlightens all men. However, the Bible declares that on judgment day, he will judge the secrets of all men's hearts. Personally, Lexi, I don't want anybody to go to hell. I don't want, I, I, I want everybody in heaven because that's what the love of God ought to be in our hearts. We should not be a people that run around telling people, you're going to hell, you deserve hell. No, I, I don't believe that. I believe God wants everybody to be saved. I believe that we ought to tell everybody that God, uh, that God loves them. But the reality is when, when that man comes before God, God knows more than I do and you do. Yeah. And there is such a thing is that the work of God is not constricted to just the church. God can move in the world around the church, in spite of the church. There's nowhere the church goes that God isn't already there sure. because he, he's a ubiquitous God. He's everywhere. So I can't determine what work God is doing in someone's life and what measure of truth they may know. And on that day, when they look into his eyes and he looks into them, it is God who is the final judge. And so I do leave that to God. But what, but what I also understand is that he commissioned the church that in spite of that, your that's why the church needs to be aggressively at all costs out there telling all people that what God has done through Christ for them. So in that respect, you do agree with what Bishop Pearson is doing because he is aggressively telling people, hey, you know, I know we preached fire and brimstone for years and we condemned everybody to hell, and I'm just here to say that God loves you. Yeah, well, but the difference is he is, he is saying that uh, there's no need for man to do anything behind that. I'm saying that the word is replete with examples where the objective side of the gospel, we agree on the objective side. Where we disagree is the subjective side, which not only did Jesus commission them to go tell everybody, then he said, teach them what I taught you and teach them to obey. Teach them to obey. Well, so, let me, I don't so want to therefore, speak. there's no, a... Obedience doesn't save you. There's a response. That's what I'm saying. Obedience there has doesn't to be a save you. We teach them to obey. And when I was preaching, and I know exactly what you're saying, I didn't have <clears throat> church folk. I've been around you all my life. We come every week and we hear it and we shout and we rejoice and we praise God. I can do it with the best and rest of you. But there were no Muslims calling me to hear the gospel. 
Paul said, always be prepared to give an answer to them who ask you. Nobody was asking me until I started preaching the gospel. The whole Jewish community has embraced me. I preached and packed out synagogues, and I preached Jesus, not trying to convert them, but trying to convince them. The Muslims, the Hindus, the agnostics, thousands of backsliders, so-called, or hurt church folk have come to me or come to our meetings or write me. I mean tens of thousands, bishops, children, grandchildren's wives. I have a ministry now <clears throat> that I didn't have when y'all liked me. I have a ministry to hurting people that when they introduced me, they clapped like they did for this preacher. But you're afraid to do that now. And I don't need the applause, but I do feel the love for hurting people. And they're saying, what must I do not to be, just to be safe? How can I be loved by your God? And I say, well, he's already loved. He already loves you. Yes. Christianity is not about people coming to God. Christianity is about God coming to people in the Christ person and in the Christ principle. And so I tell you, the Bible says, as in Adam, the first Adam, all men die. So in Christ, the last Adam, all will be made alive. Most folk believe in the first Adam and are devoted to him. But the last Adam, whom we call Christ, you question. Nobody has to believe in Adam to die. Hindus die, Muslims, Jews. But you believe you've got to jump through hoops to, to believe in the, in, the, in the last Adam, whose blood, the first Adam's blood didn't atone for anybody's sin. The last Adam, Jesus, washed them away. John Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Well, if he took away the sin of the world, then the sins of the world are taken away. But the world doesn't know it. And we who are supposed to be rejoicing don't tell it. We add to it. And so in the simple gospel, and all that stuff about subjective and objective, I just said about the person I'm trying to reach on the street, ain't into that stuff. They just want to know, am I loved? Am I forgiven? Is it all right? And I say, yes. The blood of Jesus washed your sins away. Whether that's Jew, Hindu, Muslim. Now, if Jesus washed the sin away, then the sin is washed away, and God will not hold you accountable for those sins because of Christ. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. Now, if you don't believe that, then maybe you're not a Christian, or maybe you ain't saved if you don't believe it. Since you believe it comes by believing. Most Christians don't believe in the finished work. They believe in your additional work, what we got to do to get him saved. He never told us to get him saved. He told us to preach the good news that God loves you, that your sins are washed away, that you're atoned for and reconciled to God. The ministry of reconciliation. That's all I'm trying to say. That ain't going to hurt. That's, I don't know why that scares everybody. You know, well, when, I was, when, <clears throat> I was, um, when I was asked to come and uh, be a part of the event, I came for two reasons. Uh, the first one was that it would give me an opportunity to see you again in person. I mean, George Bloomer loves Carlton Pearson. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And I love you, too. That's it. And respect you. The second reason was uh, to not come and converse with you from a scholarly platform, because it is very, very difficult for the creator of a thing to debate a creator of a thing on his creation. You know what you're talking about well. You've experienced that. But to have the opportunity to share with people what I've experienced also. Very good. Uh, the message of faith. And to assume that everyone in the church understands inclusion, has rejected you, or what have you, is a wrong assumption. True. When you sat on this platform tonight and you said, are you still holding on? The place erupted. That's the Carlton we know and love. That's the Carlton we know, we love, we cherish. No one can take that from us. Amen. Nobody. 